There's less than a year now until the opening ceremonies of the Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia. President Vladimir Putin recently demanded the ouster of a senior Olympic organizer because of cost overruns at the Games, which will be the most expensive ever. It's a sign of how much is on the line for Russia next February and how hands-on the president has become. Fiona Hill at the Brookings Institution has just published a book on Putin and explains his unusual relationship to the 2014 Games. This, in, in many respects, for Sochi is kind of unusual. I mean, Olympic projects are not usually... They're, they're very good for the state or for the government, you know, they're pursued for different kinds of reasons, but they're not usually a personal project. Hmm. And what's interesting about Sochi is this personally very important for Vladimir Putin. So this is really putting Putin himself on the line. It really also underscores how much the leadership of this current government is personalised in the man himself. That also heightens the risk when you tie yourself personally up so much with an individual project. And why would he do it? Why is it so personally important to him? There's an interesting uh, angle to this. Mr. Putin is an outsider to Moscow. The new urban elite, the new middle class there, has no great love for Mr. Putin. Mm. He's from Leningrad, from St. Petersburg, uh, the second city. He's in a number of projects there, but Sochi has become his personal city. He's associated with there. He's had masses of state meetings there. He's flown people from all over the place. They think the meeting with him in Moscow, next thing they know, he's got, they're going down to Sochi. He has made this his project. In many respects, the way that Peter the Great made St. Petersburg his own imperial project, Putin has made Sochi this. It's really kind of put his stamp on Russia. Why there? Because he likes to ski? It's a beautiful place. I mean, it very much looks and reminds you of places in Italy where the mm -hmm. mountains come down uh, to the coast. It's very dramatic. And in a way, Putin's also saying, you know, we're just as beautiful for tourism and just as inviting as, as other places are. I mean, Sochi probably seemed like a brilliant idea when uh, it first came up. It's a pretty well-known uh, resort uh, in Russia, but one that had really fallen on hard times in the Soviet period. So I think they had fantastic uh, location, all the right environmental factors. Only problem this place has a bit of a, a challenged history, let's say. Yeah, I feel a big but coming on. It would have been, it could have been, it seemed like a good idea. So is it not a good idea? I mean, basically the Russians fought 60 plus years of war to subjugate the Caucasus mountain range. And this is known in Russian history as the Caucasian Wars. It's the, it became the stuff of novels by Tolstoy, uh, by other you know, great Russian authors. This is a really famous part of Russian history. And as luck would have it, 2014 is the 150th anniversary of the final suppression of the Caucasus rebellions. And there's been an upsurge of Cherkess, pan-Cherkess nationalism as a result of the Russian government's decision to build this great Olympic site here in Sochi, right in the heartland of the native ancestral lands of the Cherkess. The 2008 games were widely seen as China's coming out party. And is there any analog, I wonder, between China coming out in 2008 and Russia asserting itself in some way in 2014? Well, there is, I mean, very much so. I don't think the Russian government is so worried about recouping its investment here. It's making a big a symbolic gesture it's showing that you know Russia owns the Winter Olympics. This is for them a chance to do 1980 over again. People boycotted the Moscow Olympics. This is a fresh start. This is a different Russia. This is Putin's Russia. This is Putin's personal project in Sochi. The one thing that Mr. Putin will definitely leave behind is a transformed Sochi.